Hi everyone, Ilana Leka is my name and here's a warm welcome for everyone at home for a second English class. And just as last week, I'm going to invite my two students today. Great to see you again, Francesca, Patricia. Hello. Hi. Hi. And uh, we're going to be together for one more class today. Last week, we started by talking about holidays. I'd like you to take a close look at this picture for about five seconds. I am then going to ask you to close your eyes, maybe even use your hands to cover your face. One, two, three, four, five. Close your eyes now. Cover your face. And from your memory, please tell me as many objects as you can remember from the photo you took a look at. Uh, I remember there was a phone and some headphones. All um, right. Also a hat mm -hmm. and a passport. And a passport. All right. How about you, Patricia? Can you remember any other objects besides the ones that she's mentioned? So phone, headphones, passport, hat. Um, what else do you remember? I remember the toy airplane, mm -hmm. the uh, magnifier. A magnifier? And, uh, and a map and some sunglasses. All right. You can uncover your eyes now. Is there anything left that you haven't mentioned? Yes, there is this object over here. How do we call that? A compass. We call this a compass. All right. What would you say these words all have in common? Traveling. Traveling. Very good. OK. I'll start by reminding you, first of all, what we discussed last week before we delve into a new class. We talked about where we can go on holiday and the means of transport that we can use. Means of transport which, if you remember, we arranged according to three large categories, whether we use them to travel on land, on water or in the air. We moved on to discuss types of holiday and we mentioned beach holidays, adventure holidays, safari trips, camping trips, road trips and cruise vacation, sightseeing tour and staycation. Girls, do you remember which of these I mentioned is my favorite type of spending the holiday? Um, yes, it was the camping trip. Camping trip. Excellent, Francesca. Thank you. All right. Now, Patricia, could you please explain the word staycation? It was a new word we learned last week, and I would like you to explain it. Staycation is a holiday where when people like to stay near their homes, at their home, so they don't have to necessarily go out somewhere. They just relax in their own space. All right, or in their own neighborhood. But they do travel to places nearby and they enjoy places like parks or uh, museums or something like that. Great. Outdoor. OK, excellent. Francesca, can you explain what a sightseeing tour is? Um, a sightseeing tour is when you go somewhere to visit the, the city more than um, uh, just stay there in the hotel room or um, go shopping. You just uh, go and uh, go to touristic uh, objectives. All right. Yeah. Tourist attractions. We call them tourist attractions. Mm -hmm. Good. It could be places of historical interest or it could be nice places people can visit. 
All right. So still going backwards, cruise vacation. Your turn, Patricia. Please explain what this is, a cruise vacation. A cruise vacation is a holiday where you spend on a cruise ship and you make new friends and you sail to the water and there are a lot of fun activities to do. And Great. Mm -hmm. Good. And let's remember the ports of call along the cruise where people can visit um, famous ports. All right. And we'll take one more. Francesca, your turn to explain what a safari trip is. A safari trip is when you go uh, to places where you can see wild animals, uh, such as uh, you go to Africa to see the lions, giraffes, or elephants. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Thank you. But we're still talking about the same subject, and this time I'd like us to think of activities that people can do while on holiday. What do people do on holiday? There are two columns. In the first one, from one to eight, there are some verbs. In the second column, A to H, there are words, which we are going to match with the verbs. So we'll start, of course, from the verbs. And Francesca, Patricia, taking turns, are going to tell me which words on the right-hand column we can use with those verbs. Francesca, will you tell me for the first one? So stay... In a hotel guest house. Good, excellent. All right, when we go on holiday, we need a place to stay. And one option would be to stay in a hotel. Sometimes hotels can be expensive, and that's why we can choose something which is not that expensive, like a guest house. Patricia, your turn, please. Hire can be used a with car. A, car. a car. Good. You can hire a car, which means what? To rent one, which means that you pay a or using the car for a limited time. Excellent. Yes. All right. Good. You can hire a car while you're on holiday. And what do you do with a car? You travel around. You mostly just uh, go into the city where you are. So it's like, it isn't as slow as walking. So you just feel the need to hire a car because you want to go faster and you want to see the city. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is not for everyone. You need to be a driver in order to hire a car, yeah. but that gives you the uh, freedom to travel to other places. You can travel outside the city, for instance, if there's something you would like to uh, see. So hire a car. That's one option. Back to you, Francesca. Go. Uh, go sightseeing or backpacking. Very good. So we use the verb go with activities starting from verbs to which we add ing. You can go sightseeing and we know what sightseeing means because we've explained this word, word already. Or you can go backpacking, which means... Francesca, can you tell me what backpacking is? Back and pack. So a backpack is something we wear on our bags and they are large bags in which we put all sorts of things. When we go backpacking, it means, it you, means, yeah. Patricia, can backpacking. you help? Uh, when you go backpacking, you like pack stuff and maybe just walk around. All right, it me. gives you once more the freedom to uh, go to places, to go hiking, and of course, from time to time, just as Francesca mentioned earlier, you can put up your tent and simply stay there. And Francesca, uh, sorry, uh, Patricia, on to you for the next verb. Go on. A trip or a cruise. Good. So remember, go is followed by an activity which ends with ing. Go backpacking. Go on will be followed by a noun, for instance, a trip 
for a cruise. Francesca, take. I take photos. Good. While we're on holiday, we uh, would like to keep the things that we see for longer in our memories. And this is when we take photos. We want to remember things, so take photos. Patricia, visit. Museums or galleries. Good. Francesca? Look around souvenir shops. All right. Can you please explain what a souvenir is? It's um, something you get from where you, you buy from where you uh, go to visit. Or, small um, objects? Magnet. Good. Oh, yeah, small objects. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good, good. Fridge magnets, yeah, are very popular souvenirs. So people want to be reminded of the places they visited. Sometimes they buy souvenirs for themselves. Um, sometimes they buy them for other people. And buy is the next verb. So buy is used with souvenirs, as I've mentioned earlier. Now I'd like you to think of your summer holiday and um, Patricia, will you please choose one of these verbs together with a phrase they go with and use it in a sentence? Like visit? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, this summer I visited the National Art Museum of Scotland. Great, thank you. Patricia, your turn to choose one more and use it in a sentence. So not visit because she has already used it. Please choose another one. I'd like to go sightseeing in other countries other than Germany. All right, good. You must have been in Germany many times. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. But when you are on holiday, be that in Germany or any other place, how do you keep in touch with people who are at home? Be those members of your family or your friends. How do you keep in touch? I mostly, when I miss them, I video call them so I can see their face and communicate with them and see their reactions and maybe ask for advice. All right, video calls is a good choice. Francesca, what else do you do? Um, I text them and talk to them through messages. Good, okay. Using our phones nowadays is probably the most common thing we do. So, of course, texting people, uh, sending messages, sending emails. Do you ever send emails? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, not only that Yeah, form formal events for like teachers and school. All uh, right, okay, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Thank you. Call me old fashioned, but let me tell you what I do when I'm on holiday. I always buy a postcard because I think it's one of those nice things. You can remember the place uh, as well as, um, I don't know, taking the time to write something for somebody you love. Now, funny you should, mention, you should have mentioned Scotland before because this is where I was this summer. And I bought this postcard to write to my sister. As I'm going to read out the postcard to you, I'd like you to consider these and arrange them in the order that they will be mentioned. So please pay attention. Hi, sis. I'm having an amazing time here in Scotland. I'm staying in a cozy cottage near a charming village. The cottage overlooks a sparkling loch. The weather is quite typical for Scotland. It's often cloudy, but today the sun is shining through the clouds, creating a magical glow on the landscape. Right now, I'm sipping a cup of tea while enjoying the breathtaking view from our garden. Tomorrow, we're planning to explore the village and take a hike up the hills. Sending lots of love, Ileana. Francesca, what was the first thing I mentioned when I wrote this postcard? Uh, the greeting. The greeting. I said, hi, sis, which is short for sister. Good. That was the first one. And then I mentioned something about the place where I am. I'm staying in a cozy cottage. So the next thing on the list was, Patricia? 
Description of the holiday location. Good. Which was followed by Francesca? A description of the weather. Of the weather, yes. I did mention that in Scotland it's often cloudy, although that particular day the sun was shining. And then, Patricia? Uh, you mentioned activities? Yes. Sipping a cup of hot tea right while enjoying the view. And I ended this in a friendly way. Sending lots of love, I said. Okay, now by doing this, we have actually discussed the way in which we organize a short text, which could be part of a postcard or maybe an email. So you see, that's why I asked you about emails earlier. And I'd like you to take a look at another example of a postcard. This time, a family enjoying their summer holiday in Portugal wrote this to uh, their mom. Now, there's a mistake here in this postcard. Uh, of course, I'm going to ask one of you to tell me what the mistake is. So please scan it for one, two, three, four, five. And the mistake is, Patricia? On the third paragraph, it says we have a picnic, but it's at the present time, it's the simple form, right? Yes, it's a ah, form, right. so we have... Good, good point. All right. So this is the present simple. We have a picnic under a shady palm, but it's misused here. So it's used incorrectly because when we talk about things that are happening now, we need to use the continuous form. So let me remind you something that you learned in the previous seasons with these classes how and when we use the present simple and the present continuous. And of course, I'll start with a present simple. We use this whenever we talk about repeated actions or habits. So something that happens regularly. For instance, I said the weather is often cloudy in Scotland. Or we use the, it to describe permanent states and situations. She lives in New York. It can also be used when we talk about facts that are always true. The sun rises in the east. And the present simple is most of the times used with adverbs of frequency to show how often something happens. For instance, every day we wake up to the gentle sound of waves was a part of the previous postcard. And the present simple can also be used when we talk about timetable tables or scheduled events. For instance, we say the plane leaves Edinburgh at 25 past five. However, the continuous form is used for actions which are happening now at the time of speaking. I said, for instance, in this postcard right now, I'm sipping a cup of hot tea. It can also be used for actions which are temporary. They may not be happening right now, but they are temporary. I'm staying in a cozy cottage near a charming village. The continuous form is also used whenever we refer to situations or states that are changing. So they may be part of a longer process. Our summers are getting hotter. It's a process. And we can also use the continuous form of the present when we talk about something we have arranged to happen in the near future. So plans for the near future. Tomorrow, we're planning to explore a charming nearby town and try some traditional Portuguese cuisine. And time to practice everything we've mentioned. What we'll do is to complete this postcard using the correct form of the verbs in brackets, meaning the present simple or the present continuous. I would like to start with Francesca. Francesca, you will read the first two paragraphs. So you will stop after Empire State Building. This is when uh, Patricia will take over and do the rest of the text. So please, Francesca, start. Hey, Fiona, I'm having 
an amazing time here in a vibrant New York City. I, I'm staying in a cozy apartment right in the heart of Manhattan. The view from the window is a mesmerizing and I can't get enough of, of the energy that surrounds me. During the day, uh, the days, I'm wandering through iconic landmarks like Central Park and the Empire State Building. Great. Patricia? I am planning to catch a Broadway show in the legendary theater district. The city never sleeps and the lights and sounds are like nothing I've experienced before. Tomorrow, I'm excited to visit the famous museums and stroll along the Brooklyn Bridge. Saving you lots of excitement from the Big Apple. Take care, Dan. Excellent. And of course, this is the postcard with the correct forms of the verbs. And I must congratulate, it, uh, congratulate you on this one. You've got them all right. Of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, please pause it. Take your time to uh, check your answers too. And I'm going to assign a bit of homework now. Imagine that you're on holiday and you're going to use this paragraph plan to write a postcard to a friend or your family. You will need to pay attention to how you use present simple and present continuous. You will start, first of all, by greeting the person in a friendly way. You can say hi in the name of the person, or you can even use dear. You will then move on to say where exactly on holiday you are. So give a short description of the place where you are. Then you will also say something about the weather. You will move on by describing things that you're doing on your holiday. And as a friendly closing, you can say, sending lots of um, love or maybe a warm hug, sending you a warm hug and you sign it with your name. Of course, not your surname, just your first name. When I read this one, for instance, I signed it off as Ilana because this is my first name. So we don't use surnames when we write to somebody we know very well. So this is going to be your homework. We can call it homework. And uh, I'm going to thank once more our lovely guests today, Francesca and Patricia, for joining me. It was lovely seeing you again. Bye-bye. Bye. And this is the end of our second lesson. And until next Monday, I'm Elena. Bye-bye.